Hey guys, welcome back to another Fly Tying Tuesday with Avmax. My name is Max and uh, today we're going to be tying a UV polar uh, minnow or streamer pattern. Um, so a pretty cool fly. Um, it's got some weight put in some different spots, kind of make it sink a little bit differently. Um, so a couple of new things I got that I'm using today uh, that I really like uh, is going to be the Jurassic Base uh, from Peak. Um, as you can see, it's a very wide plate. Uh, it's very heavy. It's like 11 pounds. Um, really keeps everything secure. Um, and especially when I'm using, you know, bucktail and uh, tying bigger, you know, predator patterns, um, allows you to not move at all. So C clamp is not necessary. Um, something that I used to do uh, with just like the smaller pedestal bases is actually like have a C clamp to just clamp everything down. Um, so this nice big base uh, really helps um, tying those bigger flies. Um, another big fly uh, gadget would be the saltwater jaws um, that kind of allow for anything bigger than a, probably like a size 2 or maybe even like a 4 or 6 um, if you're tying like specific streamer uh, on a specific streamer style hook. Um, so if you haven't seen these definitely check these out they're not super pricey and uh, Bang is definitely worth the buck, so um, add that if you if you got the peak here. So uh, to get started, um, I got a, a TP610 um, A-Rex hook in here. It's a trout predator streamer. Uh, this is a size one. Uh, we're going to be using two of these uh, to make an articulated fly here. Um, like I said, it's not going to be weighted in the front. Uh, we're going to put some weight right in the middle uh, to kind of create a different, uh, more even kind of sink. Uh, when you're fishing it. So fairly slim uh, material wise. I uh, got some cool colors. We're gonna go with some rusty brown, some rusty copper, UV, um, and then an orangutan in this uh, pseudo hair. Uh, so this is kind of a cool material. Sheds water really well. Um, adds some um, you know water pushing abilities or properties and uh, we'll get it going here. So um, to start um, I got some Semperfly Nano Silk. Uh, this is going to be the 100 near. And, uh, and I got some Zappa Gap. Um, and I always start with a little bit of Zappa Gap when I'm tying a streamer pattern. Just keep everything together, lock that thread down tight. Snip on my tag there and keep trying to flatten that thread out a little bit. So I've already got it prepped. Uh, this is our Maribel Blood Quills in the, uh, in the rusty brown. So I picked off some of the tips toward the stem here and that gives us a nice uh, tail, tailing material here. So pull everything back, kind of get my desired length and make sure it's even um, and then I'll do a pin trap and pinch that down and get our tail tied onto the, the shank there. So I like to hold the stem and work it all the way up to about the eye. Helps with kind of like a more even uh, tie-in point for the, the bulk of the material that you're using for the body. So now it's just kind of an even surface instead of a lot of bulk being built up back here with just bare shank being exposed. So got our tail uh, a little bit longer than the shank of the hook. Um, I got some flashaboo, um, just standard in the copper. Uh, the copper looks really nice with the rusty brown. And uh, save yourself a uh, tangled mess. Uh, just taking the tip of your scissors and kind of plucking out some of these strands of flashaboo. Uh, makes it really easy. So, got about four or five strands here, and uh, I'm gonna cut that in half. And just can kind of stick to your fingers, so I kind of like to roll them off my fingertips. Um, so, once I got these cut, I'm gonna kind of make the tips all uneven. So then it happens to both sides, and I'm going to have it right in the middle. Uh, I'm going to tie this down on each side of the fly here. 
and fold this part over and now I got that tied in and I'll grab my other clump here flash boo same thing kind of make them uneven have the red in the middle and work that right on the side of the fly here Hold the other piece back over. Now, evenly on each side, tips are kind of matching up to the tips on the, uh, the blood quilt. So, move on to our UV polar chenille. Um, grab a nice strip here and it kind of goes in a certain uh, you know direction or pattern so I want to find uh, the tip of it where all the fibers are kind of like laying back uh, away from the fingers that I'm grabbing it with um, so they're all kind of um, gonna be they're gonna lay down the direction that we want them when they're being put on the fly so tie this in um, and this is going to be the bulk of our uh, body so it'll be fairly fairly slim in the back here um, and we'll add a little bit more um, in the front kind of add some bulk and uh, change the the profile of the fly so I like to when I'm using uh, longer chenilles like this um, I like to manually do my wraps so I can pull everything back and get it going the direction I want opposed to using the rotary feature. Um, so I know on other videos people have commented that I don't use the rotary feature and uh, this just allows a lot more feel um, in what I'm tying and uh, which way the material is going. Um, and with using hackle pliers like this it, uh, it's pretty easy might even spend more time um, you know getting things situated in the bob and cradle and uh, doing a half hitch and all that kind of stuff so uh, this is a uh, more efficient for me so working all the way up to right behind the eye here and I'm gonna secure that down, a couple of wraps, a couple in front, a couple behind, and then we'll snip out the remaining Take my wood finish and kind of use it as a bodkin. So there you go, real messy, uh, fairly thin in the back here. And then there'll be a little bit more thickness leading into the front of the fly. So put a little bit of zappy gap on the thread there, tie that in, and then do my whip finish. There's your back half of the fly. Uh, you know, you can fish fly just like that. It'll probably fish pretty well. So now we'll uh, get the articulation going on here. So got another TP610 in the, in the one. And secure that in the vise. Add a little bit of zap on here. And 
and start back in with the nano. Nice even coating. Snip out my tag. Flatten my thread out a little bit. And just eat up as much of that zappy gap as you can with the thread. Make sure everything's super secure. So this is the intruder wire. Uh, this is a large size. Uh, I think color really matters. It's going to be covered up for the most part. Um, just want to make sure that you're not using scissors while you're uh, cutting this. So old pair of rusty dikes here. And I'm just going to cut like a three or four inch piece. Keep that together. Tie this in right off, slightly off to the side, uh, almost right on top, and I like that uh, zappy gap on there prior because it does kind of soak into the thread and then coating this on there it seems to grab uh, the wire really well, um, never had anything slide out, it's pretty secure in there. So this is where our weight comes in. Um, so we got a couple of uh, tungsten cone heads here and we're gonna use three of them. And uh, this is gonna make up our, I guess, division between the two hooks, allowing for cleaner hookups, uh, more even sink rate. And uh, three tungsten cone heads should drop, drop a fly pretty quickly. So we got those tied in there. Slider back hook in. And now I'm just gonna go back through the cone heads. Like so. I'm gonna bring this to the middle. Make a couple loose wraps. And so by me, I'm kind of putting it off so that the, the first piece of the wire I tied in wasn't directly on top. Uh, this allows me to kind of fit them so now that they're both kind of sitting right on top of the, the shank of the hook together, uh, which makes this kind of stay uh, perpendicular to the shank how we want it. So I'll make some slightly loose wraps going down there. And this allows good articulation on the fly there. Weight staying in the middle. Now I can start getting a little tighter with my wraps. Kind of got it measured out. Point where I can snip out my wire. And then I'm going to throw a little bit more zap gap on there to secure everything down. To just make flies last longer. Um, you know, zappy gap or some kind of super glue is uh, super key. I mean, uh, it significantly improves uh, the life of the fly, especially when it gets eaten quite a bit. So if you get in a good habit of using that, no matter what kind of pattern you're tying, even if it's like smaller, uh, you know, nymphs, um, it'll significantly improve the, the life of the fly. Um, sometimes it'll eat the material way that you're using, so be careful of that. But here's the back half. So some of these fibers that we stripped away from the blood quill, uh, we're just going to use to kind of cover up the the cone heads here. So not a big clump. But just enough. Kind of hide those cone heads a little bit. Tie that in, kind of spread them around the shank. And call that, call that good. Thicken it up just a little bit. Go. 
through. So, kind of covers up the cone head, covers up the little thread head that we made on the uh, front of the back fly. And uh, now we'll go for some more UV polar chenille. Same thing, kind of try and find which way everything's going and uh, tie that in right up against the marabou. And this we want to make kind of more overlapping wraps. build up a little bit more um, bulk or size in the fly. Um, and I'm going to kind of show you a trick on how to do that here in a second. So making my wraps and bring it right up to where my thread's at. Put one more in there. So I'm going to tie that down and then snip out my tag there and then I'm gonna tie pull everything back and bring it back about halfway so now we got that tied in and work in the rest of this chenille. Put one more turn in there and secure everything down. Barely any waste there. So I'll make sure all my fibers are pulled back and I'll bring it back a little more. So, so you just added a little bit more fullness um, to the front portion of the fly and the back's a little bit uh, thinner. Um, so it just adds a good taper and uh, ensures that we're pushing a lot of water up front while this has the ability to uh, really have some good movement behind the fly. So now we're gonna select another piece of uh, marabou out of here for our like collar. So while I'm looking for marabou um, to do this, I'm looking for a, a piece that's going to uh, not have a super thick stem at the bottom, uh, allowing me to create um, an easier palmer with the marabou. So just like we did before, I'm gonna pluck out about half the feather. Then I'm going to do uh, Palmer. Got that piece of the marabou tied in. And start making our wraps with the marabou. trapping too many of them <laughs> and if I get one more turn in here capture the stem one in front one behind front one behind and snip out quill there Out. 
Okay, there's no one trapped in there. And then work back over that marabou just a little bit to give myself some room for the head of the fly. So, looking pretty good, uh, real nice um, kind of taper that we got, that kind of like teardrop shape. Um, and uh, the copper and the purple and the brown all look really good together, so. Kind of could be a sculpin imitation, um, you know, maybe even a bait fish imitation, imitation um, you know, down in some deeper water. A little bit of flash in there, a little bit of dark. So now we got our uh, orangutan here. And uh, I'm just going to cut out some squares. Directly on the hide. So it's obviously very thick at the bottom, close to the hide, and they're like almost guard hairs. I mean, this is a synthetic material. Um, but I want to try to pluck as much of those out as possible um, and just be left with these nice long strips. So, gather those and cut through the hide. If you ever worked with craft fur, um, it's very similar. Uh, craft fur and I'm just going to pull out some of these remaining bulky fibers. We left with these nice long. So I'm going to do that one more time, make a little bit more. So now we kind of got a nice patch here. Snip, just flatten this up. And then we're going to do a, uh, a hollow tie basically to get these to be pulled back. Make sure those are all pulled back. Bring this back to almost where the marabou's at. And spread this evenly around the shank. Make a loose wrap. Make sure everything's gathered the way we want it. And now we can make a couple of tight securing wraps. And uh, so we want to keep this for the most part. Uh, I'm going to trim it down just a little bit so it's not too bulky. Uh, but this helps add um, to the fly um, by adding some, um, I guess, bulk to the head um, so that when everything's pulled back it really keeps that fat teardrop shape um, and kind of keeps a, a rounded head. So kind of evenly spread this around, leaving uh, I'm going to make some real tight wraps almost building a little bit of a thread dam kind of keep those fibers pulled back and uh, when you're doing this it's nice to use the rotary feature to kind of turn it over so that you're grabbing on both sides of it so 
There we go, now it's got a real nice profile, teardrop shape, everything kind of coming back. So now I got a, got a couple different clips here, um, and they work well for a bunch of different things. Uh, this is like a chip clip, um, or actually uh, just kind of all-purpose clip. I got at a, a grocery store at some point. I think it was like 99 cents, and then this is a clip for uh, hair. Um, so these vary in size and can come in handy um, when you're using, um, you know, bigger fly, bigger flies like this. Um, so this is going to help hold everything back and makes it real easy to do a whip finish. So when you're working with craft hair or bucktail um, or other synthetics like this, um, it kind of helps pull everything back out of your way, like to do a whip finish um, or to, you know, build up a thread dam behind the head. So I got my super glue through there. and. Now I'll do my whip finish. And pretty nice finishing of the fly there. So I've also used a lot of scissors fly tying and uh, the Dr. Slick razor scissors are definitely one of my favorites. Uh, super sharp, serrated edge, um, worth checking out if you haven't before. So um, this fly could be fished as is like this. Um, I think we're going to throw some eyes on there uh, just to make this fly even more appealing. Got a nice taper to it some nice color in there. Um, I really like the light brown with kind of the, the rusty brown in there. So for our eyes, I got some uh, living eyes. Uh, these are the eight and a half mil and these are the wind color. So we're gonna grab two out of here, set them upside down. They do have a little adhesive to them uh, prior to putting anything sticky on them. So Gotta be careful with what you're doing. And uh, I'm gonna take my little clip here and I'm gonna pull everything back and clip it down. So now when I kind of flatten things out, it's gonna be pulled back enough for me to lay down some glue and easily fix those eyes on there. I don't want to go that deep. There we go. So now I'm just gonna throw some zap on each side. Um, then I'm gonna remove this clip and I'm gonna clip on the each eye um, to try to avoid any sticking of the fingers. So really let this Glob on there and soak in. Um, if you just do it like I'm doing it now and you don't add any, um, say, resin or like epoxy or something to the head, um, it won't take long for these eyes to fall off. So um, if you do want them to stay on there for a significant amount of time, um, I would recommend doing some epoxy. Um, around the head. You can see it getting into that material. And drop that eye on there. They're pretty even on each side. Try not to get it stuck on my fingers at all. And so now I'm going to remove my clip. I'm going to put it evenly on my eyes and just kind of let the glue cure. So with the Zappy Gabby done take long. So 
one slid down just a little bit. So if I was to add epoxy now, I would uh, kind of do the same thing. And I would, once I got them stuck on there, I would pull them back, pull the, pull everything back again. And then this is where I would fill everything in with either the UV or the epoxy. And I would go back to about where the eye stops and just coat that very efficiently. And then wait until it cures and then remove everything. This should return to its kind of, you know, bulky profile, uh, but the head will remain, um, you know, coated in resin and be much more secure. So there you have it. Fun little streamer pattern. Um, fish it well.